Hello and welcome to another episode of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, one of my obsessions at the moment is, and I've, I've talked about this in my podcast, and, and if anyone's seen me kind of run a workshop in the last couple of months, is how do you get students to, to work through topics and have practice and develop, develop fluency of topics that they've already met before? And I think this is difficult. I think it's far easier to introduce a topic for the first time to students because you can really start, really think how you're gonna introduce it, you can plan everything out really carefully, and the students don't have any knowledge of, of what's coming next. So they've no expectation, they've no um, kind of preconception that they're rubbish at it, or that they find it easier or anything like that. However, the vast majority of lessons that I teach, I find that I'm, I'm actually teaching topics that kids have at least a bit of knowledge of and before. And I think that's difficult because you can't introduce it from, from scratch because kids already know something about it. But at the same time, you can't assume that they're experts at it. You've got to find ways of, of delivering it so they get that practice. And for me, it all comes down to purposeful practice, giving them activities and tasks that they can practice all the key skills, but they have an extra kind of dimension to them so they're a bit more engaging and a bit more challenging and this resource here is a prime example of that prime factor decomposition logical puzzle which has been up kindly uploaded by mr i'm going to go for mawson there apologies if i've said that wrong um think about think about prime factors when do kids first do prime factor decomposition well on our schema work it's right in there for year seven um, and i've seen some prime i've been in some primary lessons where they've been doing prime factor decomposition when does it next appear on the scheme of work? Probably year eight, year nine, then probably year 10, and then why not chuck it in year 11 as well? So by the time you're teaching year 10 and year 11 kids, they've probably done prime factor composition for the last four years, something like that. Do they know it? Are the experts at it? Probably not. Do you have to teach them it again? Probably. But do you want to start it from scratch? Well, no, not really, because you've got, a, you've got kids in there who found it easy first time and they're gonna be switched off. And you've got kids in there who probably found it really difficult first time. And unless they've got a really good attitude, they're gonna be thinking to themselves, I didn't get it last time, what's gonna make me get it this time? So that's where I reckon you need activities that, that cover these key, key skills, but in an interesting way. So look at this, this uh, resource, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's just two uh, PDFs, one with the questions, one with the answers. And if I just call up uh, the questions, I think it's that one, you'll see that it's just a grid of numbers. And the idea here is, and this is explained clearly in the instructions, that you've got to find the prime factors of um, each of the numbers um, in the uh, in the white squares there. So take, I mean, this will test my maths out. Take 24, for example. You do the prime factor decomposition of 24. And if my maths is right, I think it's two times two times two times three. Okay. So the idea is that you put each of those prime factors in one of the white squares around it. So you could put a two there, a two there, a two there, and the three there. Or the three could go there, or the three could go there, or the three could go there. Now, normally that wouldn't matter, right? If you're doing a factor tree, it doesn't matter which way you factor it and so on. But it does matter for this because you'll notice that these two squares also form the prime factor decomposition of 132. So it's going to be important where you choose to put that three. And by the time you get into the middle, so 36, so here we go, 36 is six times six, so that's two times two times three times three, it's gonna be very important where you put your twos and your threes because that's gonna have an impact on whether you can successfully prime factor decompose 84 and 60. So it's a logical puzzle, but crucially it's got that key practice in there. Because by the time kids have done this, look how many prime factor decompositions that they've done. And then they've got to use their brains to, to start to figure out where they need to put them in the grid. And also as a byproduct, they're gonna discover little facts about numbers. So how how can you tell that a number's got a, a prime factor of two versus um, not? So I'm looking at one, three, five. Have I got a way of knowing straight away that that doesn't have a, um, a prime factor of two compared to 210? So it even promotes those little discussions as well. So I just think it's a wonderful resource for promoting what I call purposeful practice. And it's not as if I've come up with this. I mean, Don Stewart's been an advocate of this for years and Rich specializes in this. Activities that practice fluency help kids develop fluency, but in an interesting way. And I think that's something I'm going to be focusing on um, in the future in these Resource of the Week series. So there's a little hook to get you back. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this resource. Hop onto the resource page and give it a download and give it a review if you like it. Um, and I'll see you for a fresh Resource of the Week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.